Next, let's turn to culture and the question of whether the Harry Potter books are anti-Semitic. John Stewart tells us he was just kidding. The former star of Comedy Central's The Daily Show, who is Jewish, engaged in a riff on his The Problem with John Stewart podcast, in which he claimed that some characters in the Harry Potter series of novels and films were anti-Semitic stereotypes of Jews come to life. That generated a discussion that trended on Twitter. That, in turn, spawned more discussions about anti-Semitic imagery, in addition to online comments about Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling being an anti-Semite. Now, Stewart is now disavowing any responsibility for the discussion. In a subsequent podcast, he said his previous remarks were just a joke and that no reasonable person would have taken them as a serious accusation of anti-Semitism. He then went on to state that Rowling was not an anti-Semite and should in no way feel obligated to respond to him, though, of course, she had ignored him all along. While profanely blasting Newsweek for running an item about his podcast that he claimed took his remarks out of context, though they were, in fact, accurately reported. That Stewart is now trying to put out the fire he started is a good thing, even though his protestations about being innocent of any intent to smear Rowling are disingenuous. The whole point of Stewart's brand of humor has always been to make political and social statements cloaked in satire. Though he has often pretended to be nonpartisan and even non-ideological, his goal was always to earn laughs by skewering people, parties, and ideas he despised. His monologues and routines were funny. However, the object wasn't merely humor, since he rarely used it to attack liberals or any cause he backed. To the contrary, the show became under his leadership and continues to this day under his successor, Trevor Noah, a daily in-kind contribution to the Democratic Party, as well as a place where unfair criticism of Israel can be heard. So when he says he was just kidding about Rowling deciding to depict Jews as the creepy goblins who are the bankers in their fictional world, he's not being entirely honest. The point of this discussion was to make it appear as if the world of wizards that untold millions of children of all ages have enjoyed since the novels first appeared was in some way complicit in perpetuating unflattering ideas about Jews. The reason why it is open season on Rowling is not exactly a mystery. She has essentially been cancelled, or as cancelled as a billionaire can be, for offending current woke orthodoxy about transgender nomenclature. The controversy shows how easily the discussion of Jew hatred can be detached from the intent of those using phrases or images, as well as from any informed understanding of their origin. Stewart is right that short-statured creatures with exaggerated features like big noses is a staple of anti-Semitic propaganda, such as the cartoons and the Nazi propaganda outlet Der Sturmer and other such rags. Part of the reason why small and deformed creatures are connected to anti-Semitism is because of the elf-like Nibelungen in Richard Wagner's epic four-part opera, Ring of the Nibelungen. Wagner was a notorious anti-Semite, so it was natural for many to assume that the two Nibelungen characters in the operas, who are both evil, were stand-ins for Jews, though the Nibelungen as a whole are victims rather than all villains. Yet Wagner was merely drawing from a medieval poem that dated back to the 12th century, which itself stems from pagan tales that were, in one form or another, shared by both the ancient Germanic as well as Norse peoples. So whatever Wagner might have meant to claim that all such fictional creatures are inherently anti-Semitic is a stretch. Indeed, goblins or elves or other small-statured beings, with or without magical powers of some connection to deities or the underworld, have been part of the lore of many different cultures, including some that had no knowledge or connection with Jews. Which means that it is not only possible to enjoy Harry Potter without thinking of anti-Semitism, it is also probably sensible to do so. Jews are, after all, actual humans, not goblins. The notion that any such mythical race instead are Jews is irresistible to some, but still nonsense and we've heard similar ridiculous claims about characters in Star Wars and Star Trek. What any such conversation usually misses is that by seeking to tag such fantasies as a product of hate, we are usually ignoring actual anti-Semitism, both the kind that uses ugly caricatures of Jews and that demonizes them in other ways. For example, 
leftist Jewish cartoonist Eli Valley deliberately employs traditional Der Sturmer-style caricatures of Jews in his panels, in which he accuses Israel of blood libels and depicts its supporters in much the same way that the Nazis sought to delegitimize the Jewish people in Zionism. On the other hand, it is no small irony, given Stuart's pose as an arbiter of what is and isn't anti-Semitic, that Ilhan Omar, one of the nation's most prominent anti-Semites, was largely normalized on The Daily Show, with multiple fawning interviews, as well as on the CBS late-night comedy show hosted by Stephen Colbert, who got his start in the cast of Stewart's show. It's also an interesting coincidence that in the same week that Stewart's comments about Rowling went viral, Emma Watson, the character, the actress that portrayed a Potter heroine, Hermione Granger, in the films, allowed her Instagram account to be used to promote the Free Palestine slogan that is synonymous with the extinction of the one Jewish state on the planet. That's a reminder that at a time when the rising tide of anti-Semitism is spreading around the globe, rooted in hatred of Israel, talking about the goblins in Harry Potter isn't merely a waste of time. It's a way of ignoring the fact that the Jew haters aren't always the ones who create fantasies with small creatures. Sometimes it's the fashionable and beautiful people following hateful woke trends that demonize the real living Jewish people that we should be worried about. Next, we need to remember one of the great Jewish philanthropists of this or any other time on the first anniversary of his death. 